Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 is the greatest element of the gospel for America right now. It says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, for God is working in you. Put your hand over your heart a second. Do you have any idea what it means to say God is working in you? You know, people want to lose weight, you know? We just want to lose weight, and we get that pill that says, you don't have to diet or exercise. I analyzed that. I thought to myself, what could I take where I would lose weight without diet or exercise? I figured it out. Disease. So this is, this is basically a, a uh, African virus that I'm taking that's going to make me sick and I'm going to lose all kind of weight. Now, look at this. Put your hand over your heart. God is working in me. So we want that, that gummy pill that's going to make the fat vanish. We want it to work in us. We want the vitamin to work in us. We want to listen to, we want to put earphones in our head while we're sleeping to get information from a recording that will make our IQ go up. That's working in us. But there is nothing like God working in you. God is, say it, God is working in me. You see, that's why your habits are changing. That's why your depression is lessening. That's why you're, you're watching yourself able to walk stronger in God, able to forgive your enemies. All of the emotions that are being killed by the modern culture are alive and vibrant. You see, when the Bible says to become as a child, you can put your hand down. When the Bible says to become as a child, it's a promise. It's not just a command, it's a promise. I have a granddaughter, I adore her, because never in the history of the world has such a beautiful young girl ever come to the human race, like Lydia. Lydia's it. My wife and I absolutely adore our granddaughter, and she knows it, which makes her a great threat to the human race at this point. But what I want you to understand is that I see in her that I want to protect her. The things I don't want her to know before she should know them or to find out about them in a way that won't hurt her. That's what you feel. Now look, the Bible tells us God is at work in us. He said become as a child. That means you get to be innocent again. I'm gonna try this side because that's a revelation right there. You get to be innocent again. You know the thing a child can do is get on a ride again and again and again. That's why Epcot meant every parent comes out tired. Because that grandchild can go on that ride 40 times and feel the joy of the 40th time like it's the first. This is what the world cannot do. The world's love dies, the Christian's does not because daily it is replenished by the Holy Spirit. The Christian spirit is replenished. The Bible says, God will break your habit. It says, for God is working in you. In the New Living Translation, for God is working in you to give you two gifts, desire and power. Desire and power. Desire to change and the power to change. Here you've lived with the desire again and again and again and again. You wanted to get off that drug and you couldn't. You couldn't break that habit. You couldn't break that relationship. You couldn't get out of that abusive situation. All of a sudden now, the desire you've had is mingled with the power of God. And when you can't say no, Jesus will rise up in you and say no. When the devil knocks on your door, Jesus will answer the door. He will rise up in you. I'm, I'm trying to preach right here. I'm trying to preach. He will make you alive. He will give you resolve. Suddenly, you can do it. The taste of alcohol. The taste of drugs. God is working in you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. 
The whole time you were preaching, man of God, I was thinking about my emotions. And if you don't mind, with your heads bowed, I'm going to talk to the audience watching us on live stream. The greatest prediction that I think I could ever quote about the future is the one that is in the Old Testament that says, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The occult religions and the cults would love us to believe that there is secret knowledge, but the Bible tells us in the eighth proverb, wisdom cries in the streets, says you that are simple come this way. Have wisdom, don't be ignorant. The availability of Jesus to you, wherever you are, the, the availability of Christ to you, wherever you are right now, is the most towering good news that mankind has ever heard. He told the disciples, it is absolutely essential that I leave, because if I do not leave, the helper will not come. I am physically present with you, but the instant that I go to the right hand of my Father and release the Holy Spirit to earth, you are instantly a global movement. And your planet will be enveloped by the convicting power of the Spirit of God. He will not only arm you with information that will help you preach the gospel to the nations, he will simultaneously convict the world of their need for God. And when people respond to the Holy Spirit, they will understand that in that moment, their emotions are healing. Their past is being erased. New life is coming at them from all directions. Suddenly, their fondest wish and their most seemingly distant dream becomes a reality. Because now they're the person they always hoped they could be. They're the man they wanted to be, the woman they always wanted to be. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to tell you who is in the worst shape. Is the person that's in church all the time. Doesn't have the advantage of the prostitute or the drug addict to have a clarity of their condition to reach that golden emotion called true desperation. Hit rock bottom and finally conclude, I can't do this anymore, ever. But churches that have a modern message, churches that, have a, that are purveyors of half cures and band-aids, delay your deliverance. They have delayed your deliverance by affording you a false peace. While they've settled your controversy with God, God has not settled it. In God's eyes, you have not repented. That's why the active ingredient of the Christian faith was never at work in you. But now is your chance for God to heal your emotions. Now is your chance to rise above the fray and live a new life in Christ. So what I'm gonna do is ask you in a moment to let me pray for you wherever you are. Mario, my mind and my emotions are at war with me. That woman at the well needed a man's attention and floated from one relationship to another. God intercepted her right at her point of need. And what I need, Mario, where I'm sitting, is for God to heal my mind and my spirit. I don't need a dead religion. I don't need more rules and regulations. Although, after you are converted, you will lead a holy life according to the word of God. You will not commit adultery. You will not be a thief. You will not involve in unnatural behavior. 
you will not poison your body with drugs because you will repent. But here's the most telling moment. I need a new life. I, I have the desire, but God has the power. I have the desire, but God has the power. And that promise in Philippians is, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Imagine a life where you could please God. Imagine that. There is no pleasure like putting a smile on God's face. There is nothing that matches that. Now, wherever you are, you're going to let me pray for you. Say, Mara, tonight I'm going to get out of the curse that's on me, the bad habit that controls me, the destructive emotion that's eating away at me, and the dark thoughts and the horrendous fear, anger, and depression that wants to grip me all the time because I need living water. I need Jesus. I need the power of the gospel. I want everyone else to hold steady because I'm not done tonight. And you know, it is a long meeting, but I'm not done tonight. But I've got to deal with this now and then I'm going to deal with something right afterwards. Wherever you are seated right now, don't you fight God anymore. Don't you dare fight God. I don't care how the devil is screaming in your ear that you can never change and you can never be set free. I want you now, with all of your might, with every bit of what's in you, to, to get the courage to do something, to receive new life, to be set free, to be made alive and powerful by Christ. Now, where you are, let me pray for you. Mara, I need Jesus to heal my mind. I need Jesus to heal my emotions. I need Christ to give me a new life. I need the real conversion and not the dead religion. And I want you to pray with me, man of God. Man of God, pray with me that tonight the gospel's power will be unleashed in my spirit and I will know Christ and I will be his child and I will be his disciple and I will leave everything else behind. Let me see your hand if you'll let me pray for you. I want to say one more thing as hands are going up. The temptation is for you to think this is for someone else, but I'm going to show you why it's not. Why are you in such turmoil right now? Why is conviction on you? Why is your mind and your spirit feeling this tremendous burning desire to put your hand in the air and unlock the future that you've always wanted? It's because the enemy wants you to stay in that twilight zone, half sin, half God, that is painful. Put your hand up right now if that's what you need. If you're going to let me pray for you, put your hand up. Now, stand to your feet if you've raised your hand. Just get up on your feet wherever you are. Stand right now. Boy, is this a miracle. This is just a miracle. We're watching a miracle right now. Now, all of you... All of you that are standing, find the nearest aisle and walk to the front. Come to Jesus for living water and deliverance and healing. How many of you are excited for these people? And those of you watching, live streaming, you get ready to say the prayer these people are saying and you will experience Christ right where you are. You will experience him right now look at all these people that are coming to the son of god you can do it right where you are right now fill in right here somebody give god the glory is this amazing so wonderful how many of you believe that we need to do this all across america how many of you believe we need to do crusades all across America. Let's win a million souls and change the narrative in America. That's what we want to do.
That is the vision. We're waiting for all of you to come, and we're not going to start until you're here because there's not any of you that aren't important. Every one of you are someone that Christ died for. He died for you on the cross. That death was so complete so that the cure would also be so complete. Just as he completely died, he completely rose again, and he completely defeated the curse. So here we are, and I want you to put your hand over your heart. I want you to think about this. I want you to remember your darkest moment in your life. I want you to reflect on the moment of your life when you were most afraid, most despairing, and most desperate for help. And relive that moment right now so that you can clearly understand how deep this moment is for you, how completely God this is. It's almost like you want to tell God right now, all my life, this is the one thing that I've always wanted and could never get to. And now it's going to happen to me. What people have said throughout the centuries about how Jesus made them new, I am going to have that myself. I'm going to understand how somebody could write amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Point your arms toward these people, church. All of you that are standing before me, say these words out loud in church. Join in, out of love, join in. Say, Jesus. This is it. This is it. I'm at the foot of the cross. I see you on the cross. Dying the most cruel death. And paying the price. Taking the penalty. For my sin. And now. Three days later. You rose again. When you died for me. You proved that you loved me, that you would do anything to save me. When you rose again, you proved that you have the power to change me. Change me now. I have the desire. Give me the power. Wash away my sin. Make me new. Let me know joy and peace. Let me know the devil is gone for good. The habits are gone for good. And I'm a new creation by the power of Jesus Christ. And for that, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the praise. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give the Lord praise for these countless miracles, countless miracles.